So recently, someone I used to work with reached out and asked me, hey, what are some things I should probably get familiar with in terms of AI so that in 10 years, I'm not left behind? And in all seriousness, I don't think you need to become an expert at the AI stuff. I do think it's good to like have an understanding of where the industry is kind of going and what is the current capabilities of AI because every year it just keeps getting better. And I think just spending some time learning about it would be good. So I have three SaaS products that I have right now that use a decent amount of AI in them. We have Icon Generate AI, which is used for building out icons for whatever you want. Um, maybe you have a SaaS product or like a little game, you can build out icons for them. And that is using something called Dolly behind the hood to generate the icons. We have Scary Story Generator, which is the latest thing I've been working on. And I'm using Replicate to generate the spooky images in the imagery for the videos that get uh, created at the end. And then also we have Project Planner AI, which is another SaaS product that I worked on where we have a lot of features hooked into OpenAI's LLM. One of the features we do is when you create a plan, uh, we go ahead and just give you like some search engine optimization keywords and all this other stuff that you could use on your landing page to help your site be more optimized for SEO. And then of course, just throughout the uh, application, for example, I think there's like a feedback section where I can go here and like convert this request to a work item using AI. So, so I click on this button, it basically uses AI to figure out what is the work item it should generate based on the user feedback. Now, I will say probably the most important thing you should learn how to do if you're a developer is start learning about AI tooling you can use in your editor. When Copilot first came out, this is what I used and it worked pretty well, although the suggestions sometimes sucked. So that's why I kind of moved away from Copilot and started using Cursor, which is a, uh, basically it's a fork of VS Code. And that's what I mean using my videos now, basically has like a bunch of built-in AI capabilities where you can ask questions across your whole project. Um, you can ask questions about a certain page you're looking at, a component, stuff like that. Line by line, you can actually ask questions over here. So for example, I could go ahead and ask a question over the search input. Uh, it's very, very powerful. I do recommend using it. It's very nice. Um, and until something better comes along, I'll probably stick with this. So that's like the first category. There's AI that you can use in terms of coding. And of course, you should probably be using ChatGPT and asking questions to it. We'll get to that in a second. But yeah, I guess my point is find something and at least try using it. You don't have to like go all in on it, but get familiar with using these because they will elevate your productivity in terms of software development. Now, in terms of if you are building out a new product, I definitely recommend checking out V0. Um, if you're using like Next.js and ShadCN, which is a component library I like to use in all my videos, this is a really cool tool where you can basically prototype out um, a lot of stuff using AI. So, so for example, with V0, I can say create me a questionnaire application page, which shows a question and four answers. Okay, so let's just kick that off. There's a lot of great tooling out there that uh, does stuff like this. I don't know why this just crashed. So let's just refresh. Okay, there we go. Now this is cool because like it basically builds out an entire component for you. You don't have to actually build this stuff out and it's not hard. I will say this is not hard to do by hand and having something that can kind of build this out in five seconds for me and I have like a nice scaffolding I can start with is very beneficial. And then typically you can take this component, you can add it into your existing project, assuming you're using ShadCN for your component library. And then you can use cursor to kind of iterate on it and expand upon it and stuff. I found this tool very useful in combination with Cursor, like I just mentioned. And there's also Supermaven. Again, I'm not like sponsored by any of these things. I just want to kind of put them out there that there's a lot of tooling out there that you should at least try. Supermaven is supposed to be pretty fast. Um, it's a little bit faster than Cursor from what I hear, but Cursor just seems like it has a lot more features. So that's the first thing I recommend is look into some of these tools. There's more out there, Google around, and try integrating them into your day-to-day -day workflow because they will help you move a lot faster. The second thing is using something like Claude AI. This is a similar application to ChatGPT, but it uses a more powerful model for what I've seen. Like Claude 3.5 Sonnet is just able to answer questions a little bit better. And it can also like reach out to the internet and find information. Of course, there is open AI. So if you wanna use like ChatGPT, that's another solution. I would highly recommend, again, if you're a developer, have a subscription to either ChatGPT or Claude. These things can just really make you very productive. Um, if you're not already using them, I don't know why you wouldn't be using them, but this should be your first line of defense. Go ask Claude, go ask ChatGPT. See if it can answer your question. If it can't, then you start going to Google and you start doing it the old fashioned way, 
which honestly, sometimes you got to do. Sometimes you got to go to the docs because these AIs just do not answer the question correctly. Now, some of these tools feel a little bit like black boxes. So if you want to dive into more of like, what is an LLM? Check out GPT for all. Basically, this is a tool you run on your machine and you can install different models locally. Um, most of these models you find online are like very censored. You can't do certain things. So if you want to, I don't know, write like a steamy novel, you might have to find a LLM that is not censored and allows you to do this type of stuff. But I think just doing this once and understanding how it kind of works, like these things are just running models that just load up like a giant thing into memory. And then as you ask questions, it just kind of generates answers for you. Um, but you do have to have a lot of memory in your machine to do this. And I would recommend that you have a decent GPU if you don't want to sit there waiting a while for responses to come back. But it is cool to try it out locally just to see how it works and kind of understand, oh, like I don't need to pay for these. I can just run them on my machine. Because of course there's security implications of like the stuff you paste into here is going to a third party service. You don't know if they're training their models on your data and someone else is gonna get that information you just pasted in. Sometimes you wanna have stuff run locally. All right, let's move on to image generation. Image generation is a whole nother ball game of complexity. Uh, if you need to generate an image, you're gonna be learning a lot about how to craft a prompt. Typically a prompt has like a subject and then you have like a scene and then you kind of add some details. And the more you add to your prompt, sometimes the prompt just gets bad. There's a lot of configuration you have to tweak in terms of prompting. Uh, Dolly 3 is pretty good of just like here is a simple prompt, make it for me. Um, but they are pretty expensive, right? I think it's like 8 cents an image, which can be very problematic if you're generating a lot of images. But I would try it out. There's an API you can use in OpenAI. You basically just send a prompt over the API and then wait a couple seconds and it's gonna send you back a URL that you can view basically the image that it generates. Now, another one that I've used in the past is Midjourney. Midjourney used to be like a Discord only server, but I think they have a subscription now where you can go to this midjourney.com and you can start creating really cool things. Midjourney just has like a different feel to it. It just feels more realistic and authentic for the images it generates. Versus Dolly just feels kind of like cartoonish, you know, playful. It's it's just different. And of course, there's going to be like censoring that's going to happen on both of these. There's certain things you just cannot generate. And some of the things you generate are not going to give you the results that you're looking for due to like biases in the AI. But it's cool to just play with these services and see how they work and really understand like what goes into crafting the prompt. So if you look into this, here's the prompt that was used. And you'll start noticing that basically there's certain keywords you can add in, like an illustrator. You can add actual like professional il illustrators here. And the image will use the reference of that illustrator to paint a picture for you. Another thing to point out is that the closer your tokens are to the start of the prompt, typically the more weight they have. So like the image that's generated, uh, if you look up here, big close up, hot blazing sun over a desert. So this is like the first main subject, the hot blazing sun over the desert. And since this is at the start of the prompt, you're probably going to get some good results of this always showing up in your picture versus something down here like a wise 50 year old blue eyed alchemist woman in black clothes. Notice that it's not even facing the camera. And so it kind of disregarded like old blue eyed alchemist. But if you really wanted the blue eyed alchemist thing to be in the picture, you probably should have put it first. OK, so you'll start learning a lot about prompting and how this all works and get a feel for how long it takes to do this stuff. Another thing I've tried is Replicate, and I actually use that on my side project over here. The cool thing about Replicate is you get a better idea about like what goes into stable diffusion in generating these things. So again, we have a prompt. But there's also something called like a negative prompt that you can add keywords to prevent the AI from like putting those in the image. So like deformities, ugly, those type of keywords that help the image become better. Um, there's something called image to image generation where you can paste a reference image and then AI is going to kind of analyze the image you uploaded and use that for the output. So technically I could like take a screenshot of this and upload it as the reference image and then I can start like modifying what is being generated here. And then we have, you know, parameters for width and height. Something that's very important to play around with is the scheduler. There's a bunch of schedulers you can do and they all kind of generate the image differently with like different converging points. Um, but I'm not going to get into that. And then there's inference steps. Usually the, depending on the scheduler, you want to put this at a certain amount, like for KUler, maybe 40 might be a good threshold. The higher this is, the longer it takes, but the better the image quality is going to be. Guidance scale. This is something that is usually used to look at the prompt you gave. And the higher this guidance scale is, the more it's going to follow your prompt. So in this case, an astronaut riding a rainbow unicorn. If I put this down to like a two, there's a high chance the image is not going to have a unicorn or an astronaut in it. If I put a 13, 
there's a very high chance that it's going to have both a unicorn and an astronaut but sometimes if you have this too high the image just doesn't look good so this is something you just want to play around with and it takes hours of just playing around with images and the, the parameters to get it to look good anyway the point is try replicate if you want to get more into like the the nitty-gritty details of how this stuff works because a lot of that stuff has been abstracted away in terms of dolly 3 and mid journey and then if you want to get all the way into the weeds you can actually clone a Git repo called Stable Diffusion Web UI and run this locally. If you have a GPU or a gaming machine, it's going to utilize your GPU and it's going to be able to basically do the same thing that Replicate and all these things are doing. But you can find a particular model and actually just download that onto your machine and use automatic Stable Diffusion Web UI to use the model to generate these images. Now, I would go check out CivitAI.com. They have a ton of models. Some of these models probably not safe for work. Um, but a lot of them are really good at generating photorealistic images if you want to try doing that as well. All right, let's move on. So something that is recently new, which I find very, very cool, is the ability to basically make videos uh, using AI. So you typically start with a reference image, and then you can have something like Pika.art or Luma Dream Machine take your image that typically you generate using Midjourney, you generate it using Replicate or Dolly, and then you pass that to some of these tooling to have it generate a video based on your reference image. And I would say this stuff is actually pretty, pretty cool. Um, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos where an entire video, like a seven minute video, is all made up of just AI generated videos. But it does take a lot of work because you can only generate like four to five seconds per image. And so it takes a lot of like skill to create your reference images and then prompt Dream Machine or whatever to have it do stuff with the image you gave it. Um, but definitely check into those. I think this has a very high potential for making some cool SaaS products, which I've been kind of looking into as well. Like, could I apply this to Scary Story Generator? Probably. So check check those out. Leonardo.ai. There's Pika.art. Luma Dream Machine. Or sorry, LumaLabs.ai. Put a comment below if you have some others. They're all basically pretty good. Okay, so some other things that are very important to understand would be the text-to-speech. So there is a API endpoint you can hit with OpenAI where you can take some sentence, right? You can actually take like a, a, a story and you can convert it to be a voiceover. They have different voice models you can use, like they have a woman's voice, a man's voice. I would say the open AI one sounds a little bit ro robotic for the models, but it gets the job done. Okay, so that's what it kind of sounds like for that model, which they have a bunch of different ones. So I go check out this because you can also unlock a whole a plethora of SaaS products using text-to-speech. There's also Whisper, which does the inverse. You can pass it a video or some voice, and it can give you the transcripts based on the timing of the words, right? So you can actually get like at second marker 1.2, it said this word, and then second marker 2.3, it said this word. So Whisper is really good for like basically getting transcripts from existing videos and speech. And then that's also what I'm using for Scary Story Generator because I have the, you know, text to speech that generates the whole story. And then I need the timestamp so I can use them for the uh, captions, okay? So I use that. Basically, it's a huge pipeline of just like feeding AI images and AI uh, voiceovers and stuff like that. Now, if you're not happy with the models, like how they sound, there's something called Eleven Labs where they have a lot more realistic sounding to the voice. And you can actually train a model using your own voice or using someone else's voice, which I don't recommend. It's probably illegal. But you can train voices to sound a particular way. Okay, so if you want someone with like a certain accent or maybe someone who would be really good for like a spooky story, maybe check out 11 Labs IO and uh, play around with it. It's a very, very cool service. But those are some of the, um, the things I've seen with like, you know, related to audio and voice. Very useful. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is vector databases. So if you want to build a application that needs a bunch of different files or a bunch of different PDFs, typically what you do is you need to split up that PDF into segments and then you take the segment and you generate a vector from that, right? So on OpenAI, somewhere over here, they have like the ability to generate vectors based on what you pass it in. And a vector is basically a mathematical array or list of numbers that describes what the text is. So if you write a story about dogs or dogs walking in the park, that vector that, gener that gets generated would basically score very well if someone were to also vectorize the sentence the dog and then you can compare those vectors and like all the things that are related to dogs would show up in the result set of the vector it sounds complicated it's really not just go check it out now i will say like something that i use in my projects is convex and they have built-in vector searching with it so it's really cool that you can basically just take your data for example if you have a pdf file you can go ahead and just vectorize the entire thing 
store it in convex and then later on you can do a vector search to get the information back that's relevant to the search right so it's kind of like a more powerful elastic search or more powerful like um, a fuzzy search and like a sql query but these if you actually understand and master vector databases and vector search you can make some really cool applications as well using ai in combination to like the open ai llm type of stuff so that's like an overview of all the stuff I have kind of learned over the past year or two. Um, there's a ton of other AI stuff out there and a ton of other services popping up related to AI. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give an overview so that you don't feel like you're just not out of the loop. Uh, just, you know, stay familiar with some of the stuff. It's really cool to build AI things. People hate on AI for some reason, but I think this is the gold rush in terms of building products. And you can either hate on it or you can jump aboard and build something cool. All right, have a good day and happy coding.